Let me give you some words that come out on your speed building. Uh, you have 140 to 170. And um, words. Oops. You have good day, Mr. Phillips, Lance Archer, Guild General Insurance Company, Carolyn and Stephen Cooper, Larry Carl Phillips, Baton Rouge, Louisiana, Wooten Road, Patterson Engineering, Daytime, Educational Background, Albuquerque. You have <coughs> Patterson Engineering, Self-Employment, Master's Degree. Good morning, Suzette. Good morning. And any questions on any of those words? Master degree. Um, MRD, and I think it's final R. Yeah. M final R degree. Um, any other ones? Educational background, KD. <clears throat> you have measurements, MRB, MTS. Two strokes, measurements. Uh, insurance company is SNRC. And then you have Louisiana is Q, uh, LA twice with an asterisk. And then would you please? W O U M S. And then state your full name and address and business. So state your full name. Okay. S T U R N S T U F R N D C. Oh, okay. So maybe, I think it says business address. Oh. So it might be off a little bit. Um, it's full name and business address, but you could just do that and then come back with that. Business, come back with business address. Okay, to add business in there to remind you. And this is going to be you all one for for five minutes, okay? <clears throat> Here we go. Good day, Mr. Phillips. My name is Lance Archer. I represent Guild General Insurance Company with regard to a lawsuit filed by Carolyn and Stephen Cooper. As you know, I'm here to take your deposition today. Would you please state your full name and business address for the record, sir? Mary Carl Phillips, 1819 Wooten Road, Baton Rouge, Louisiana, that's where I operate as a sole practitioner. I am a mechanical engineer. And I'm also engaged during the daytime sometimes with Patterson Engineering. And my next question was going to be, where are you employed now? And you said some of that. I'm self-employed. In what field are you self-employed? In what? Oh, I see. I'm a mechanical engineer. I'm self-employed as well as being an employee and a principal owner, one of the main owners of Patterson Engineering. And that is a service company that does the analysis, design, planning, measurements for static and rotating equipment in the petrochemical paper industry. Do you have a CV that we can look at today? I didn't bring one. I was hurrying out of there. I would have brought one. Do you have one you can send or fax to Mr. Wright? And then he can eventually get that to me. Oh, yes. He probably has one lying around. Since we don't have the benefit of one here briefly, just for the record, could you give me your educational background? Sure. I got a Bachelor of Science degree in Mechanical Engineering in May of 1960, a Master of Science degree in the same in August of 1961, both from the Polytechnic Institute. Is that what we know as LSU now? No, that's Louisiana Tech up in Ruston, Louisiana. Okay, I understand. Please go ahead. I worked for the atomic bomb people from 61 to 62 out in Albuquerque. Then I came to LSU in the mechanical engineering department as an assistant professor in 1962. In 1966, I attended Stanford on a grant from the federal government. 
1968, I came back to LSU as an associate professor. I was promoted to a professor in, I believe, in 1975. I retired from LSU in 1962. And just go right ahead and go on, sir. In 1992, I joined Patterson Engineering on a fairly light basis. In 1993, I became an owner in the company. And since 1972, I have been engaged, shall we say, to do sole practice in litigation support as a mechanical engineer and have testified quite a few times in that capacity. In the self-employment area, that's mostly to do with litigation support. These days, yes. My deal with Patterson Engineering is if I were to get a purely engineering project, it would go to Patterson's people. In fact, I go out and hustle for that activity. I think in your answer that you have just given, you've talked a little bit about the differences in your self-employment and Patterson. Could you just tell me a little bit more about what Patterson does and what you do for Patterson, if you haven't told me already? I am what's referred to as a senior mechanical advisor at Patterson. We actually have four mechanical engineers right now. We had as many as six or seven, but we suffered a slight slump there. I'm the old hand. The head of the company is also a mechanical engineer. Clifton Mann, he runs the office. What is the name also, sir? Clifton Mann, he's in Houston and interacts with petrochemical clients in Houston. My title is Senior Mechanical Advisor, which means I've got the most gray hair with respect to these problems. And I guide the young guys on doing analysis and design on process tools. So it's my job based on my mathematical background and my science background to make sure that it all is technically correct and to keep track of the young guys. Thank you for that thorough answer, Mr. Phillips. Do you have a PhD in mechanical engineering? No, I do not. You said you have a master's. A master's degree, it was all a dissertation type of deal. It's a funny thing that happens to you, you know. You get four kids and, well, you just simply say enough is enough. Mr. Phillips, when you were retained in connection with the Horn case, when? The first mention of that was probably about six months ago that I had discussed it in minor detail with Mr. Wright. But realistically, I only did work on it just in the last week. Okay. Uh, and ladies, so I wrote some words for you. You have PhD is... Uh, you can write the P by itself and then HD with the asterisk and it'll put it in writing for you. You have background, BGD, initial B, final GD. Analysis is um, ANL and then CIS. You have federal government is FROFT, F-R-O-F-T. You have Albuquerque is K-W-E-R-K -E or Q. Q-E-R-K, sorry, Q-E-R-K. You have engineering, E-N-G, come back near, come back G. And then you have mechanical is M-K for mechanic and then N-A-L. Any questions on anything there, Monica or Suzette? No. Is there a shorter way to write realistically or is that struck out all the way? I would write real is and then cleave. Oops. Oops. Sorry. Real is and then cleave. No. Sorry. Real is. And it doesn't come out. I uh, put in a. Are you putting an asterisk on the is? Okay. Uh huh. Yeah, you um, got it. Okay. So how would you do it, Monica? Real. You, you did get it. Uh, it's. I put real and then. Asterisk IS and then CLE. Oh, okay. Okay. 
I was hoping maybe you could do realist and then clean. That's Are what I always thought, but I guess you can't. Because it's real estate. Oh yeah, that's real estate. I know, you could define it. It'll tell you, yeah. You could define it. Okay. And any other, Suzette or Monica? No. Okay. And this will be at 150 and it's tough. It is. And uh, I'm just going to mute you all, okay? Okay. That would pop up. And this is 150, you all. Good day, Mr. Phillips. My name is Lance Archer. I represent Guild General Insurance Company with regard to a lawsuit filed by Carolyn and Stephen Cooper. As you know, I'm here to take your deposition today. Would you please state your full name and business address for the record, sir? Larry Carl Phillips, 1819 Wood Wooten Road, Baton Rouge, Louisiana. That's where I operate as a sole practitioner. I am a mechanical engineer. And I'm also engaged during the daytime, sometimes with Patterson Engineering. My next question was going to be, where are you employed now? And you said some of that. I'm self-employed. In what field are you self-employed? Oh, I see. I'm a mechanical engineer. I'm self-employed as well as being an employee and a principal owner, one of the main owners of Patterson Engineering. And that is a service company that does the analysis, design, planning, measurements for static and rotating equipment in the petrochemical paper industry. Do you have a CV that we can look at today? I didn't bring one. I was hurrying out of there. I would have brought one. Do you have one you can send or fax to Mr. Wright and then he can eventually get that to me? Oh yes, he probably has one lying around. Since we don't have the benefit of one here, briefly, just for the record, could you give me your educational background? Sure, I got a Bachelor of Science degree in Mechanical Engineering in May of 1960 a Master of Science degree in the same in August of 1961, both from the Polytechnic Institute. And is that what we know as LSU now? No, that's a Louisiana Tech up in Ruston, Louisiana. Okay, I understand, please go ahead. I worked for the atomic bomb people from 61 to 62 out in Albuquerque. Then I came to LSU in the Mechanical Engineering Department as an assistant professor in 1962. In 1966, I attended Stanford on a grant from the federal government. In 1968, I came back to LSU as an associate professor. I was promoted to a professor, I believe, in 1975. I retired from LSU in 1992. Just go right ahead. Go on, sir. And in 1992, I joined Patterson Engineering on a fairly light basis. In 1993, I became an owner in the company. And since, and since 1972, I've been engaged, shall we say, to do sole practice in litigation support as a mechanical engineer and have testified quite a few times in that capacity. In the self-employment area, that's mostly to do with litigation support. These days, yes. My deal with Patterson Engineering is if I were to get a purely engineering project, it would go to Patterson's people. In fact, I go out and hustle for that activity. And I think in your answer that you have just given, you've talked a little bit about the differences in your self-employment and Patterson. Could you just tell me a little bit more about what Patterson does and what you do for Patterson, if you haven't told me already? I am what's referred to as a senior mechanical advisor at Patterson. We actually have four mechanical engineers right now. We had as many as six or seven, but we suffered a slight slump there. I'm the old hand. The head of the company is also a mechanical engineer. What is his name, sir? Clifton Mann. 
He runs the office in Houston and interacts with petrochemical clients in Houston. My title is Senior Mechanical Advisor, which means I've got the most gray hair with respect to these problems. And I guide the young guys on doing analysis and design on process tools. So it's my job based on my mathematical background and science background to make sure that it all is technically correct and to keep track of the young guys. Thank you for that thorough answer, Mr. Phillips. Do you have a PhD in mechanical engineering? No, I do not. You said you have a master's. A master's degree. It was all a dissertation type of deal. It's a funny thing that happens to you, you know. You get four kids and, well, you just simply say, enough is enough. Mr. Phillips, when, when were you retained in connection with the Horn case? The first mention of that was probably about... Okay, you are. So I wrote dissertation. I, I'm sorry to write the words when, when you all are dictating. It's just that's when they come up and I can remember them easier. So dissertation is dissertation. Capacity is KPAS, come back TI. In fact, NFT, support, SPORT with an asterisk. Uh, you have associate is S Longo RBT. You have, um, what else? Assistant is stant with an asterisk, S T A N T asterisk. Industry is S T R I. Equipment, Q I M T. And then self-employed is self, and then I just wrote out employed. Is there a brief employed? I think you stroke it out. It's employer ploy. See, employer's ploy. P-L-O-E? Oh, maybe that's what it is. Yes, thank no, you. Employee. No employee. I don't know. I think you have to stroke out employed. Right? Suzette, is it coming out for you? You know what I think I did? I think I entered employed oh. as employed. Okay. That's I, what I did. do the same. I do the same. Okay. I would. Okay. Any questions, Monica or Suzette, on anything there? No. No? And no. Anything, Suzette? Um, there's a word where he's asking for a C something. C oh, CB. Uh -huh. yeah. CB. Okay. Uh huh. What is that? Curriculum vitae, your, like your resume oh, okay. for a professional. Uh huh. Oh, okay. Okay. Thank you. Uh huh. And this is going to be at 160. And I think is good day, Gade. Yes. Good day is Gade. Okay. There you go. Good day, Mr. Phillips. My name is Lance Archer. I represent Guild General Insurance Company with regard to a lawsuit filed by Carolyn and Stephen Cooper. As you know, I'm here to take your deposition today. Would you please state your full name? And business address for the record, sir? Larry Carl Phillips, 1819 Wooten Road, Baton Rouge, Louisiana. That's where I operate as a sole practitioner. I am a mechanical engineer, and I'm also engaged during the daytime sometimes with Patterson Engineering. My next question was going to be, where are you employed now? And you said some of that. I'm self-employed. In what field are you self-employed? Oh, I see. I'm a mechanical engineer. I'm self-employed as well as being a, an employee and a principal owner, one of the main owners of Patterson Engineering. And that is a service company that does the analysis, design, planning, measurements for static and rotating equipment in the petrochemical paper industry. Do you have a CV that we can look at today? I didn't bring one. I was hurrying out of there. I would have brought one. Okay, do you have one you can send us or fax to Mr. Wright, and then he can eventually get that to me? Oh, yes, he probably has one lying around. Since we don't have the benefit of one here briefly, just for the record, could you give me your educational background? Sure. I got a Bachelor of Science degree in Mechanical Engineering in May of 1960, a Master of Science degree in the same in August of 1961, both from the Polytechnic Institute. And, sure. Is that when you, or what we know as LSU now? No, that's Louisiana Tech up in Ruston, Louisiana. Okay, I understand. Please, go ahead. I worked for the Atomic Bomb people from 61 to 62 out in Albuquerque. 
Then I came to LSU in the mechanical engineering department as an assistant professor in 1962. In 1966, I attended Stanford on a grant from the federal government. In 1968, I came back to LSU as an associate professor. I was promoted to professor, I believe in 1975. I retired from LSU in 1992. Just go right ahead, go on sir. And in 1992, I joined Patterson Engineering on a fairly light basis. In 1993, I became an owner in the company. And since 1972, I have been engaged, shall we say, to do sole practice in litigation support as a mechanical engineer and have testified quite a few times in that capacity. In the self-employment area, that's mostly to do with litigation support? These days, yes. My deal with Patterson Engineering is if I were to get a purely engineering project, it would go to Patterson's people. In fact, I go out and hustle for that activity. I think on your answer that you have just given, you've talked a little bit about the differences in your self-employment and Patterson. Could you just tell me a little bit more about what Patterson does and what you do for Patterson if you haven't told me already? I am what's referred to as a senior mechanical advisor at Patterson. We actually have four mechanical engineers right now. We had as many as six or seven, but we suffered a slight slump there. I'm the old hand. The head of the company is also a mechanical engineer. What is his name, sir? Clifton Mann. He runs the office in Houston and interacts with petrochemical clients in Houston. My title is Senior Mechanical Advisor, which means I've got the most gray hair with respect to these problems. And I guide the young guys on doing analysis and design on process tools. So it's my job based on my mathematical background and my science background to make sure it all is technically correct and to keep track of the young guys. Thank you for that thorough analysis and answer, Mr. Phillips. Do you have a PhD in mechanical engineering? No, I do not. You said you have a master's. Master's degree, it was all a dissertation type of deal. It's a funny thing that happens to you, you know. You get four kids and, well, you just simply say enough is enough. Mr. Phillips, when were you retained in connection with the Horn case? The first mention of that was probably about six months ago that I discussed it in minor detail with Mr. Wright. But realistically, I only did work on it just in the last week. Were you asked by Mr. Wright to render an opinion in this case, sir? Well, and so you have thank you, you all. It's T-H-A-U-N-G with respect, W-R-P-T. And then interact, you can write in one stroke, S-P-W-R-A-K-T, that final S. And then I was going to tell you, I write senior, S long E R N. I don't know if you like that because I think you all have to write C your. So just if you like it, it's the R's inverted. Um, and then you have I understand, I N D Z. You have petrochemical, it's pet R O, and then chemcal. R short, R short O. Let's see. Design. I write like this S D long I N. Because my this words are SD, so I don't know if you like that, or you write design. Um, you've got operate, O E R P T, operate. Any questions, Monica or Suzette? Mm, no. No, Monica? No, no questions. And this is going to be, so like owner, I, oh, that's your ordinary reason. Okay. This is 170, you all. Good day, Mr. Phillips. My name is Lance Archer. I represent Guild General Insurance Company with regard to a lawsuit filed by Carolyn and Stephen Cooper. As you know, I'm here to take your deposition today. Would you please state your full name and ad business address for the record, sir? Larry Carl Phillips, 1819 Wooten Road, Baton Rouge, Louisiana. That's where I operate as a sole practitioner. I am a mechanical engineer. And I'm also engaged during the daytime, sometimes with Patterson Engineering. My next question was going to be, where are you employed now? And you said some of that. I'm self-employed. 
In what field are you self-employed? Oh, I see. I'm a mechanical engineer. I'm self-employed as well as being an employee and principal owner. One of the main owners of Patterson Engineering. And that is a service company that does the analysis, design, planning, measurements for static and rotating equipment in the petrochemical paper industry. Do you have a CV that we can look at today? I didn't bring one. I was hurrying out of there. I would have brought one. Do you have one you can send or fax to Mr. Wright? And then he can eventually get that to me. Oh, yes. He probably has one lying around. Since we don't have the benefit of one here briefly, just for the record, could you give me your educational background? Sure. I got a Bachelor of Science degree in Mechanical Engineering in May of 1960, a Master of Science degree in the same in August of 1961 both from the Polytechnic Institute. And since we don't have, is that what we know as LSU now? No, that's Louisiana Tech up in Ruston, Louisiana. Okay, I understand, please go ahead. I worked for the Atomic Bomb People from 1961 to 1962 out in Albuquerque. Then I came to LSU in the Mechanical Engineering Department as an assistant professor in 1962. In 1966, I attended Stanford on a grant from the federal government. In 1968, I came back to LSU as an associate professor. I was promoted to a professor, I believe, in 1975. I retired from LSU in 1992. Just go right ahead. Go on, sir. And in 1992, I joined Patterson Engineering on a fairly light basis. In 1993, I became an owner in the company. And since 1972, I have been engaged, shall we say, to do sole practice in litigation support as a mechanical engineer and have testified quite a few times in that capacity. In the self-employment area, that's mostly to do with litigation support? These days, yes. My deal with Patterson Engineering is if I were to get a purely engineering project, it would go to Patterson's people. In fact, I go out and hustle for that activity. I think in your answer that you have just given, you've talked a little bit about the differences in your self-employment and Patterson. Could you just tell me a little bit more about what Patterson does and what you do for Patterson if you haven't told me already? I'm what's referred to as a senior mechanical advisor at Patterson. We actually have four mechanical engineers right now. We had as many as six or seven, but we suffered a slight slump there. I'm the old hand. The head of the company is also a mechanical engineer. What is his name, sir? Clifton Mann. He runs the office in Houston and interacts with petrochemical clients in Houston. My title as senior mechanical advisor, which means I've got the most gray hair with respect to these problems, and I guide the young guys on doing analysis and design on process tools. So it's my job, based on my mathematical background and my science background, to make sure that it all is technically correct and to keep track of the young guys. Thank you for that thorough answer, Mr. Phillips. Do you have a PhD in mechanical engineering? No, I do not. You said you have a master's. A master's degree. It was all a dissertation type of deal. It's a funny thing that happens to you. You know, you get four kids and, well, you just simply say enough is enough. Mr. Phillips, when were you retained in connection with the Horn case? The first mention of that was probably about six months ago that I discussed it in minor detail with Mr. Wright. But realistically, I only did work on it just in the last week. Were you asked by Mr. Wright to render an opinion in this case, sir? Well, they asked me to take a look at it, and actually this will be the first shot at my opinion, too. Any questions, ladies? No. No? Monica? No. Okay, so this will be a readback and it'll be at 1.40. And we'll do one minute, okay? Good day, Mr. Phillips. My name is Lance Archer. I represent Guild General Insurance Company with regard to a lawsuit filed by Carolyn and Stephen Cooper. As you know, I'm here to take your deposition today. Would you please state your full name and business address for the record, sir? Larry Carl Phillips, 1819 Wooten Road, Baton Rouge, Louisiana. That's where I operate as a sole practitioner. I am a... 
mechanical engineer, and I'm also engaged during the daytime sometimes with Patterson Engineering. My next question was going to be, where are you employed now? And you said some of that. I'm self-employed. In what field are you self-employed? Oh, I see. I'm a mechanical engineer. I'm self-employed as well as being an employee and a principal owner, one of the main owners of Patterson Engineering. Sure. Sure. Okay. And um, Kat will do the read back you all, so I'll be right back. Anybody want to start? Hold on. I'm trying to scroll. Mm -mm. Okay. I'll go first. Okay. Qu question. Good day, Mr. Phillips. My name is Lance Archer. I represent the Guild. Is it the Guild? No. Oh, represent Guild General Insurance Company with regard to the lawsuit filed by a Carolyn. Lawsuit? Oh, filed a lawsuit. Oops. With regard to a lawsuit filed by Carolyn and Stephen Cooper, as you know, as you know, I'm here to take your deposition today. Would you please, would you please, I think, is it give your full name and address? State your full name and, uh, and business straight. address. And business address for the record, sir. Answer, Carl, no. I don't know what, I have Lar. Larry. Who, say it again? Larry Carl. Okay, Larry Carl Phillips. Uh, 1819 Wooten, Baton Rouge, Louisiana. Wooten, Baton Rouge. Oh, Rouge, Louisiana. That's where I, no, that is where I, I prelt. What's your show? P, long, long A, L, T. Operate. Okay. As Operate as a sole practitioner. I am a mechanical engineer and I'm, I am all. Also. I'm all, I'm also, I have good day or during en the day. Engaged. Oh, engaged. During the daytime. During the daytime. Sometimes with Patterson Engineering. Good. Okay. Okay. I'll try. <laughs> you got this. It's hard. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Question. Uh, my next question was going to be where are you employed now? And you said some of that. Answer I'm self employed. Question In what field are you self employed? Answer I'm self-employed as well as being an employer. Oh, I see. I'm a mechanical engineer. I'm self-employed as well. Go ahead. As being an... Is that employer? Employee. Employee and the principal owner. One of the main owners of Patterson Engineering. Mm -hmm. Very good. Got it. So. Um, for self-employed, I just added the S to, to employed. So I do S P L O I D. Oh, cool. I like that. She went to answer an email. It'll be good. Oh, okay. Okay. She's good. Okay. That's fine. Cause I guess we can too. Yeah. Were you guys going to stay on? Yeah. Uh, yeah. I'm going to stay on. Okay.
Okay, y'all. So we're getting ready for your test. Uh, let me give you proper names. Okay. Proper names you have 160 number one, Julia Brown, Maysville, Kentucky, Beachmont Avenue, apartment two, Daniel Brown, John Grow and Sons, Giggles Hair Design, Village Kitchen Restaurant, John Paul Mitchell. And so this is your QA number one. Um, I'm gonna mute you. Do you all have any questions? Anybody? No. No? Okay. No. And you're both staying on, right? Yes. Okay. So this is test number one, 160 for five minutes, you all. And it starts at the very beginning. For the record, would you state your name, please? Julia Brown. How old are you, ma'am? 29. What's your date of birth? January 11, 1961. Where were you born? Maysville, Kentucky. What's your social security number? 283 72 8316. And where do you reside? 2061 Beachmont Avenue, apartment 2. How long have you lived there? Since 85. Are you married or single? Married. What's your husband's name? Daniel Brown. Do you have any children? No. Your marriage to Daniel, is that your first marriage? Yes. How is your husband employed? He's a painter. What, what kind of painting? I mean, does he paint houses or does he paint scenes? He's a house painter. By whom is he employed? John Grow and Sons. Would you please spell that last name for the record? G-R-O-H. And by whom are you employed? Giggles Hair Design. Better spell that. G-I-G-G-L-E-S Hair Design. And what do you do for Giggles Hair Design? I'm a hairdresser. How long have you been with Giggles? Since January of 88. Could you tell me where educationally, how far did you go? Did you graduate from high school? Yes. Then what did you do? I went to work. All right, where? The Village Kitchen Restaurant. I assume that you had to go to some type of school to become a hairdresser. Is that correct? Yes. And how long does one have to study to become a hairdresser? 1,500 hours. You get a certificate to graduate or whatever? You have to go to state boards. Okay. When did you pass your state boards? 82. All right. Now, since I don't go to beauty salons, could you tell me what all you were trained to do? In other words, you can cut hair, I assume. Yes. Male and female? Yes. What else do you do? Permanent waves, hair color. I was trained for manicures and pedicures and to do full body waxing. Now, in your appointment, would you do all of those items? Cut hair, give permanent waves, color hair, give manicures, and do full body waxing. I did everything except for manicures and pedicures. Prior to June of 1988, had you ever been diagnosed as to having any allergies or anything of that type? No. Had you ever had a reaction to any type of food or anything like that that would cause a rash or illness of any type? Other than hay fever, no. And since I'm a hay fever sufferer myself, those symptoms don't usually occur until August, September, or do you have generally in the spring when things are blooming and then when the ragweed blooms in the fall? Do you take any medication for that? Just over the counter. Have you ever gone to a physician for that problem? No. Prior to June of 1988, Mrs. Brown, had you ever used any John Paul Mitchell products? No. Could you tell me, ma'am, in June of 1988, the color of your hair? Highlighted. What do you mean by highlighted? Streaks of blonde. Could you tell me, ma'am, what is your natural hair color? Medium brown. And how long have you highlighted your hair? Since beauty school. At any time when you were in beauty school, did you have any type of reaction to any of the products that you would use in your course of study? No. Any of the hairspray? No. Or permanent spray? Or if you use a spray for permanence? No. 
Could you tell me, ma'am, how you highlight hair? What do you do? We weave sections of hair, wrap it in paper, and apply color. And how often do you have to do that? Approximately every three months. Now, who would do this? Could you do it yourself, or did you have to have somebody do it for you? One of the other hairdressers. Your attorney has given me this bottle of 16-ounce shampoo, which you contend was the shampoo that you used on the night of the 23rd. And I'd like to ask you if there has been any changes to this bottle whatsoever, this container. No. Have you taken any printing or anything like that off the top or the bottom or on the sides of the shampoo bottle? No. Do you know what you did after you got off work on the 24th? I took a shower. Did you shampoo your hair that night? Yes. Did you use the same shampoo again? Yes. You used the conditioner again? Yes. Did you ever use a tanning bed? Yes. How often did you use a tanning bed? Probably once a... And then we have your second 160 Q&A. You have Mr. Crest, Jim Reed, Louis, Louis Painter, Atlantis, Dr. Kinsey, Martin Bain, Inc., Martin Bain, International Services. Any questions, you all? No. Okay. No. This, okay. This is going to be 160 number two for five minutes, and it starts at the very beginning. Good morning, Mr. Crest. My name is Jim Reeves. We've met before. I represent Lewis Painter and Atlantis in this matter. You've given depositions before, but for the record, if I ask you a question that you don't understand, I want you to let me know because if you answer my question, I'm going to assume you understood and gave me your best answer. Is that fair? That's fair. I'll let you know. Have you taken any prescription medication within the last 24 hours? No, I haven't. Is there any reason why you can't give me your best answers this morning? No, there's not. No reason at all. Mr. Crest, we last spoke on August 5 of last year, 1997, and that was in preparation for the last trial date. Since then, I understand you've had an operation on your right knee. Is that correct? That's correct. That was Dr. Kinsey who performed that operation on your right knee, correct? Correct. It was Dr. Kinsey. How many times have you seen Dr. Kinsey since the operation, if you recall? I would assume once a month, every month. The operation took place on August 26, 1997? That sounds about right, approximately that time. That was the same procedure he performed on your left knee a couple of years back. That's correct. The same procedure. That procedure is a same day procedure. You went in in the morning and you left the same day. Is that correct? That's correct. About how long did the whole procedure take? If you can approximate. Probably five or six hours. I stayed in there a while before he saw me, before he operated on me. I would say five or six hours. What did they do? Did they give you a local anesthetic? I would assume so. You weren't knocked out, were you? Yes, I was knocked out. Did you attend rehab after that? No, I didn't attend rehab. What did Dr. Kinsey tell you after the operation to do? As far as your knee, your right knee. I did my own rehab. I couldn't afford to go to rehab, so I did my own rehab. When we last spoke, you were working for international services as a night cook, correct? That's correct. I understand you no longer work for them. No, I don't. Who do you work for now? Nobody. I was given some wage data, which we'll go over in a minute, indicating that you worked for Martin Bain Inc. earlier this year. Is that correct? Yes. You paused. Do you recall something else? If I'm not mistaken, I started December the 22nd. With Martin Bain? Correct. December 22nd of 97. Correct. Are you still working for them? No, I'm no longer working there. How long did you work for them? I don't remember the last day. 
It was two weeks ago today that I called them and told them I couldn't work anymore. But in that time, I had worked eight days for them. Two weeks ago from today's date, you called them? Correct. Approximately two weeks. You told them you could no longer work. That's correct. That I could no longer work. I suppose we'll get into that in a moment. Why did you stop working for international services? To have this operation. Is there a reason why you didn't return with them? Not that I know of. Let me ask you this. As you sit here today, how is your right knee? It's getting better. Are you able to walk on it? Yes, I am able to work on it. Are you able to climb stairs? That's one of the reasons I had to quit working for Martin Vane because it was giving me too much trouble because I was climbing too much. Now, as far as maybe walking one flight of stairs and taking the rest of the day off of it, correct. I can say I can do that. But as far as continuously climbing, I can't manage it. I want to understand why you didn't go back to international services, to your old job, and instead you started working for Martin Vane. Well, just a minute. Let me show you something. I took a physical and filled out an application for international services on November the 3rd. Of 97? Yes, of 97. And they said they'd call me if they need me. And I haven't heard anything from them. So I went to work somewhere else. Can I see what you're looking at? That's my medical card for my physical. Was this your annual physical? No, it's not. It was a pre-employment. I had filled out an application. Did you quit international services? Well, I had quit. Okay, and we'll get ready for your 140s. And then you have on your 140 number one, Creed, Mr. Bill, <coughs> Mr. Spawn, San Antonio, Mr. Cruz, Mr. Hall, Mr. Pope, Victoria, Mary Pope, and Greg Hall. Any questions, ladies, on anything there? No. Okay, and it starts in the middle. Uh, this is 140 Q&A number one for five minutes, you all. Your parents, did they visit you in your home in Creed? My father had been there. Your father had been there, and your mother has never been to your home in Creed. No, I spent quite a bit of time at their house, so they really didn't feel it necessary to visit me. Let's not get into an explanation a bit. Just if you wouldn't mind answer my questions. In fact, your mother never visited you at your home in Creed. Right. How long were you there in Creed? From May until the last of October. Until the last of October? Right. Six months? Then you moved in with Mr. Billing. And did you move? He had moved in during the summer. Did you ever invite your mother to come visit you in Creed? Yes. She was welcome to come. Did you ever invite her? Yes, I think so. Did you say, Mother, come visit me? Yes. What was your mother's response? I really can't remember what her response was. She never did. In any event, she never visited you in your home for six months until October. Did she ever visit you after October in your home? No, she did not. Not until we moved over here. Has she visited you here? Yes, sir. Just last week, in fact. That was the most recent time she has visited me in Creed. How long prior to that was it that she first visited you? When we first moved in, which was, I guess, about a month or two ago. And the investigation report indicates that you are now employed. But your prior testimony is that you are not employed now. You got fired, didn't you? Yes, I did. It's not what it appears, though. You got fired because you would not follow instructions. That's not correct. Well, Mrs. Spawn, 
I am going to try to be pretty brief with my cross-examination. You were down in San Antonio, you and Mr. Cruz, when three depositions were taken. Yes. One of those was Greg Hall. Right. And you were there. Is that right? Yes, in San Antonio. You were seated in the same room? Yes, sir. And Mr. Cruz was there? Yes, sir. And you heard Mr. Hall testify that he had relations with you? Yes, I did. And your testimony is that is not true? Right. You heard Mr. Pope testify that he had relations with you? Yes, I did. And you also incidentally heard him testify that this was the first time there in that deposition that Mr. Spawn knew of it. Is that a fact? Yes, sir. And isn't it true? Yes, sir. And he testified he had relations with you. Yes, sir. And you heard that? Yes, I did. And you heard Mrs. Pope testify about trips to Victoria? Yes, I did. And at which point you were in the back seat of an automobile when she was in the front seat? Yes, I remember her testifying. She testified to that? Yes, sir. Well, I won't go into all the details, but suffice it to say, engaging, according to her, in very improper activities for a married woman to engage in. Yes, I remember. With a male individual. Yes, sir. You heard that? Yes, sir. Have you ever been to Victoria with Mary Pope? Yes, I have. Many times? We went there shopping quite often. You ever have two other people in the car? Yes, we did. Were they males? Yes. Were you in the back seat? No. Who was in the back seat? Nobody. All four of you were in the front seat? That's right. Other than that, is her testimony all false? As far as I can remember, yes. Do you consider her your friend? I thought she was my friend. How about Greg Hall? Is he your friend? We weren't that close. Do you ever talk with him? Not much. Did you know much about him? No. I think about the only thing I... Okay, ladies, and then we have your second 140. You have, and so that changed subject, so just so you know. You have Project Libertad, Omega, Dr. Barrientos, Jaime Secundaria, and Rosa Maria. Any questions on anything there? No. Okay, and this starts in the middle, okay? 140 number two for five minutes. He has not been found to be chemically dependent. Has he? No, ma'am. You did not even send him to get an evaluation, correct? No, ma'am. Because you didn't feel that he had serious problems with drug abuse, correct? I feel he had pro a problem with drugs. Okay. You did not feel that he had a serious problem with drugs, correct? Otherwise, you would have sent him to get tested or evaluated, correct? I believe that was going to be addressed through Dr. Barrientos. I wasn't sure that he needed an evaluation for substance abuse. Okay. You did not feel at this time that he needed an evaluation for drugs, correct? Otherwise, you would have done it, correct? Other juveniles, you have them screened by Project Libertad or whatever the project is. You have them screened before the predisposition report so that you can recommend that they either go to Omega or these other programs, correct? I believe that might be the process. I haven't had to do that yet. Well, you didn't do it. You didn't do this in this instance, correct? No, I did not do it in this instance. And Dr. Barrientos did not indicate that he has a substance abuse problem, correct? He recommended drug education. Okay. On that diagnosis, he does not say that he has a substance abuse problem, correct? Correct? I'm searching for the answer, ma'am. 
Okay, it's on page three. Page three, thank you. He did not indicate that. Right. And he only says drug education, correct? On the bottom, very bottom line. Yes. Okay. And he, the juvenile, was truthful and forthcoming to you when you interviewed him, correct? I didn't find that to be the case. Well, let me ask you, does Dr. Barrientos indicate that he was truthful and forthcoming in his interview with you? With me or with him? With him. That would be on page three where it says Spanish version. Second line, part of the first sentence. It states that the validity scales of this individual indicate that Jaime did not respond to the test questions in an open and honest fashion. Okay, it indicates that he wanted to look better on the test. He indicates that he presented an overly favorable self-image. Because he lacks confidence in himself and his abilities. That... That's what it indicates. So he wanted to make himself look better, correct? That it appears to be. And you don't indicate in your report that he lied to you. I don't see that in your report that you feel that he was lying to you. No, I did not. And regarding all these things about whether it's true that he was going to school, I mean, we have a certificate that he went to school in 97 correct? Or was in some type of program in 97, 2000, 2001, correct? And that's for secundaria, correct? Correct. Okay. And then on the others, we have dates that he's been involved in some type of activity, beneficial activity, correct? In 97 and 2000, correct? It indicates that on some certificates. Correct. And so there's no reason to doubt that he might have been going to school last year, correct? At some point based on those documents. Correct. And when you interviewed the mom, you did not indicate that you felt she was lying to you, correct? Grandmother, mom. I did not specifically say that she was lying. Okay, you did not. You don't note that in your report, correct? No, I did not note that she was lying to me. And your report does not indicate that you felt she was being honest, correct? No. Okay. And the reason that you know that he's not going to school right now at all is because he indicates to you that he has insufficient funds, correct? That's what he indicated. Okay. In spite of the fact that you say that Rosa Maria feels that there's some schools out there that offer free education, correct? She's more knowledgeable in that aspect than I am. But you're not aware, however, if the mother knows about... Okay, ladies. So that concludes your 140 Q&A. Any questions? No. 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 Okay, no. ladies. Good luck, okay? All right. Thank Thanks. you. Have first a good day. one was better, right? The first one. <laughs> yeah. Okay, good luck. Good Bye. Good Have a good one. All right. Bye-bye. Bye, ladies. Bye.